Hello guys, welcome to another video in the series of coding. Today we are going to do this problem which is called as all possible full binary trees. So you are given an integer n, return a list of all possible full binary trees with n nodes. Each node of the tree must have a value of 0. Each element of answer is the root node of one possible tree. You may return the final list of trees in any order. A full binary tree is a binary tree where each node has exactly 0 or 2 children. So let's take the example of n equal to 7. So there are 5 possible trees and you have to return a list of all such trees. So let's try to see how we can solve this question. Uh, let's try to understand through n equal to 7 what is actually happening here. Okay. Uh, so for n equal to 7, why are there 5 possible cases? Once we understand this, we will be able to understand the solution well. So you can see that one root node is common in all of them, right? And the left and right can be distributed in different ways. So let's see. One root node is common in all of the cases. Okay. So out of seven nodes, one node goes to the root node. So there are remaining six nodes that are left. How can you distribute this six? One way to distribute is keep one node on the left side and five nodes on the right side. If you keep one node on the left and five nodes on the right side, you are going to get these two cases. Because five can be distributed in two ways. You can have other cases also where you keep three nodes on the left and three nodes on the right. Here you have five nodes on the left, one node on the right. Here again you have five nodes on the left but in a different distribution, different arrangement from the previous one. Okay? And then one node on the right. So let's try to break it down to smaller cases and understand the problem. Let us start with n equal to 1. If it is given there is only one node, right? What will it be? It will be just a single node with both left and right child as null. There will be only one case. So you have to return a list of such nodes. So you will return this list containing one node. Let's think about n equal to 2. For n equal to 2, what are all the possible cases? Let us try drawing out some cases. This is one possible case. Okay. This is another possible case. This is case 1. This is case 2. Right? These are the cases that we can draw. But are these valid cases? No. Why? Because if you see in the question very carefully, a full binary tree is a binary tree where each node is exactly 0 or 2 children. So it has to be exactly 0 or 2. What is the problem here? This node has one child, right? And one child is not allowed. What is allowed? Zero children or two children. But one child is not allowed. So this is violating the condition. Similarly, this node also has only one child. Again, this is not valid. So for n equal to 2, you will not get any answer at all. Now, what about n equal to 4? What about even cases? Is it going to be true for all even cases? Think about it. Try to do some trial and error and it will become clear, right? Because once you do trial and error, see you will notice one node goes in the root node, right? So you are left with three remaining nodes. Let's see the case for n equal to 4. One will be the root node. So that is gone. Remaining three nodes. How can you distribute three nodes in even distribution. Why even distribution? Because the children can be only 0 or 2, right? So you cannot make even plus even cannot become odd, right? Even plus even will always be even. 2 plus 4 is 6, again even. 2 plus 6 is 8, again even, right? So you cannot distribute the three nodes in even combinations. So that is why for any even number, right? You will not get any cases at all. This is again not valid because you can see this node has only one child. One child is not allowed. It should have zero or two children. This is the condition which is given in the question. So for any even cases, you will never have the answers. Okay. What about odd cases now? Let's come to n equal to 3. For n equal to 3, what are all the possibilities? So this you can just draw it out, right? It's a simple possibility. Only one case is possible in which one node has two children. And of course, the value of each node is zero. It is given in the question. So I'm writing zero. Okay, this is simple to draw out. 
let us go to n equal to 4 just now we saw for even number it is never possible to have any cases so we will get zero cases let's go to next n equal to 5 how many cases will be there for n equal to 5 for n equal to 5 let's start drawing out the cases one node will definitely go as the root node right as the parent so if one has gone as the root node and the total number of nodes which was available to you was 5. How many are remaining? 4, four nodes are remaining. Now how can you place these 4 nodes? What are the possible ways? Let us start with simple conditions. Right? How can you place this 4? You can distribute 4 in different ways. You can give 1, 3 here. Or you can give 2, 2 here. Or you can give 3, 1 here. Or you can give 4, 0 here. Let's try to list down all the possible cases, right? Let us start with the simplest case. Let us start with i equal to 1. So, we will start by placing 1 on the left side. If 1 has gone on the left, how many are remaining? 4 minus 1 is 3. So, 3 will come on the right side. Okay. So, what will this tree become? If you try to draw this tree, what will it become? This will be the tree. One node on the left side and three nodes on the right side. Now three nodes on the right side can be arranged in only one possible way. We already know that for n equal to 3. There is only one possible way. So we can just draw the one way and that, that will be it. So this, this case just translates down to this tree. Okay. This is the first case. right? First case what did we take? We took i equal to 1 i equal to 1 means one node on the left side. So, all the remaining nodes you had put on the right side. So, this is the representation of this tree and the pictorial representation is given here. Let us try to take the next case. Right? What will be case 2? Case 2 will be 2 nodes on the left. i will be equal to 2. We started from i equal to 1. Now, we are going to i equal to 2. 2 nodes on the left and then how many nodes will be there on the right let's think about it total how many nodes were there let's come back total how many nodes were there five out of five one node has gone in root so there are four nodes now out of four you place two on the left side so how many are remaining for the right again two so two nodes will go on left and two nodes will go on right okay is this a valid case if you try to draw out this tree is there any way possible when you can draw this tree can you place two nodes on the left you can Place something like this. Now, this is a tree, but it is not a binary tree, right? This is not what is asked in the question. Full binary tree, it is not. Because, again, it is violating the condition. We already saw n equal to 2. There is no possible answer. For any even number of cases, there is no possible answer at all. So, this is not an acceptable tree because this node has only one child. But in the question, it is given you should have 0 or 2 children. So, this case is not valid. So, for i equal to 2, no case will come. Okay, let us go to the next case, i equal to 3. Which means we will try placing 3 nodes here. If you place 3 nodes here, how many will come on the left side? 1 will come on the left side. Because what is the total? Total is 4. 1 has gone in the root node. So, the total number of nodes are apart from the root node, right? Apart from the root node, total nodes are 4. So, if 3 are going on the left, 1 will go on the right. This is a case i equal to 3. So, what will be the pictorial representation of this tree? If you draw the picture of this tree, there will be 3 nodes on the left. Now, what is the way of placing 3 nodes on the left? Only this possible way and 1 node on the right. So, this is the possible way, right? Okay. Now, let us go to the next case. We are slowly increasing the value of i. So, earlier i was 1, then i was equal to 1, which means the number of nodes on the left, we got one case. For i equal to 2, we had no case because for even numbers, we will never have any cases. For i equal to 3, we got this case, right? Now, let us go to i equal to 4. If you place 4 nodes here, 0 nodes here, right? Can you get a case? Can you get a case for i equal to 4? No. Because even number, you are going to get 0 cases, right? We have already discussed for i equal to 4, there will be 0 cases. So, you cannot place 4 nodes here. If you try placing 4 nodes, what will happen? This is fine. But once you place 4 nodes here, 
this will give a problem right this node has only one child which is not allowed you should have zero or two children so that's it all the cases for n equal to 5 are finished there are two possible cases after this if you try drawing cases what will happen you don't have sufficient nodes right what if you try drawing cases after this for i equal to 5 if you try drawing cases what is the problem one node has gone in the root node and you cannot place five nodes as the children because five plus one will become six right so total number of nodes will exceed what you have you have to draw for n equal to five so that's it you have to stop here now let's go to the next next case n equal to six n equal to 6, will there be any case? It is an even number, right? So, there will be no case at all. Let's try for n equal to 7. Now, this is the crux of the problem. Once we understand for n equal to 7, we'll be able to solve the entire problem. So, let's, let's try out in the similar way, right? We will place one node as the root node. So, the total number of nodes that we have is 7. One has gone in the root node. So, how many nodes we have? 6, right? How can you place 6 nodes? There are many possible ways. We will start with i equal to 1. That is we will place 1 node in the left, remaining 5 nodes in the right. Now how many ways are there to place this 5 nodes? If you try to draw the pictorial representation of this, how should it look like? 1 node as the root node, 1 node as the left child and 5 nodes as the right child. Now 5 nodes should come here. And how can you draw 5 nodes as the right child? There are many possible ways, right? For i equal to 5, you already have the answer. There are two possible ways. In both these ways, you can draw. You can place 5 nodes in two possible ways, right? So, here you can place 5 nodes in two possible ways as the right child. So, what are the ways? Let me draw it. So, one possible way is this. So, this is one possible way. You see, this is 5. This is the case for i equal to 5. For i equal to 5, this is one possible way. But is this the only way? No. You can draw 5 in two ways, right? What is another way? Another way to rearrange this is also like this. So, again, I am drawing 5 nodes. So, there are two possible ways to draw this picture. One node on the left side and five nodes on the right side and one parent node. There are two ways to draw this representation and both these ways are listed here. So, how can you draw this quickly? So, you can already store the answer for i equal to 5. Once you are building the logic, slowly we will start storing the answers so that we can just access the memory and we need not get these trees or draw these trees again you need not draw the trees again so while recursion you will see we need not process and draw all these trees again we can just store them in memory which is what is called dynamic programming we can just memoize the solution which means in simple terms we can just store the already drawn answers so for i equal to 5 you already have uh, two answers and you had already drawn them so you need not process them again you can just use already drawn values to draw these two trees and complete your solution but is this the only possible answer no you can have more answers right this was only the answer for i equal to 1 this was the answer only for i equal to 1 right but you can have answers for i equal to other cases also we just took one possible case this has got hanged so let me refresh this so for i equal to 1 we have the answer but this is not the only possible case let's try going to next possible cases right what will be the next possible cases let me try to write it out here. What other values can i take? We started i equal to 1. Let's try to go to i equal to 2. It is even, right? So, you can ignore this case. This case will never happen. So, you can go to the next case, i equal to 3. So, how many nodes will be there on the left side? 3. Total you have 7 nodes, 3 on the left side, 1 is the root node, so how many on the right side? Again 3. 
Now, what are the possible ways to draw 3? For 3, there is only one way, right? So, you can just draw this in the one possible way that you have. So, what will be the pictorial representation of this? Let us draw. So, you will have 0 as the root node and then 3 nodes as the left child, 3 nodes as the right child. That's it. Only one case for 3. So, there will be only one total case. Now, let's go to the next possible case. So, what will be the next possible case? We started with i equal to 1. i equal to 2, there was no case. We went to i equal to 3. For i equal to 4, there will be no case because it is again even number. But for i equal to 5, there will be cases again. If i is 5, there will be 5 nodes on the left side, 1 node on the right side and 1 is the root node. Okay? Now, how many cases will be there for 5? There are 2 cases for 5. How, you, how do you know it? We already have the answer for i equal to 5. We will pull out the answer from our memory and we will use the already drawn tree here. So, for 5, there are 2 cases. Let me just draw it. So, this is the root node and then 5 you can draw in 2 possible ways. So, once you complete the drawing, you will get this. So, we have our root node which is this and then i equal to 5 is this. And then one node on the right side and this is our parent. Okay. And there will be one more case because there is one more way to draw out 5. Which is this way. So this will be how we are going to solve the problem. Now let us try to see how we can code it and then it will be much more clear. So for n equal to 7 totally there are going to be 5 ways. And this is how we will build the solution. Now let me try to code this. How do you build the solution? Okay, We will start um, taking the example of n equal to 7. Now, where can i go? Right? We will start with i. i is the number of nodes which you are placing on the left side. i is number of nodes placed in the left side. Okay, total number of nodes placed in the left side. So, i can start from 1 and i will go less than n i plus plus. So, what all will be the values of i? i will take 1, i will take 2, i will take 3, i will take 4, i will take 5 and i will take 6. Okay. Now, what will happen for even, for even numbers, right? There will be no cases. We saw for i equal to 2, i equal to 4 and i equal to 6, you cannot have any cases. So, we can give this as a base condition. If n mod 2 is 0, this means that this is a even number. There can be no cases at all. So, you can return an empty list for zero cases. right? What will be the other base case apart from this? Consider the case for i equal to 1. right? If you have one single node, that will be a base case. So, if n is equal to 1, then you can return a list of new node with only one node. Why are we writing 0 here? Because it is given in the question that uh, every node should have a value of 0. If you don't write 0 also, it's okay because it is given by default in the constructor. It will take the value as 0. So, it's fine. If you want to not give a value also, it's okay. For clarity, you can give the value because it's given in the question that every node should have a value of 0. Okay. So, this is fine. For even numbers, there will be empty list. For uh, the simple base case of n equal to 1, it will be a single node, single uh, value in the list and a single node with value 0. Okay. So, for i equal to 1, what will happen? You will recursively call this function and get the left child tree. How will you get it? You will call this function again. So, you will call the function all possible fbt for i. So, for i equal to 1, you will get the tree you will get the list of all possible trees that are there. And this will be your left child. So, what will be the right child? Similarly, you can get the already stored list on the right side. How many nodes will be there in the right side? If there are i nodes in the left side, right? Let's take the example of i equal to 1. Total number of nodes is 7. And you are placing one node on the left. So, how many nodes? are there. One is gone in parent and one is gone in the left side. Total number of nodes remaining will be 5 for the right child. Okay. All possible FPT 
from n nodes i nodes are gone for the left side one node is gone for the parent so it will be this 7 minus 1 minus 1 is 5 if this is 1 this will be 5 let's take another example if i is equal to 3 what will happen if in the left you have three nodes and one node is the parent node how many nodes will be here again 3 3 plus 3 is 6 6 plus 1 is 7 so this will satisfy the condition so you will get the list on the left side you will get the list on the right side now you have to form a form all the possible trees from the left and right so what are we doing actually let's let's try to understand again what we are doing we are trying to build the answer for n equal to 7 right so first we have a variable i let's take the simple condition i is equal to 1 initially so we have one node on the left and we have five nodes on the right we have decided and one is our parent uh, parent uh, node right this is our parent node so for phi you will get the list of all possible nodes how many ways are there to make phi nodes right so you will get the list for phi what is the list that will be written when you call this function this is the list that should be written right the list of nodes that should be returned is this. So there will be two nodes that will be returned to you. And these two nodes you have to place here. First node you have to place here. This will be case 1. Second time you have to arrange phi in a different way. And that will be case 2. Right. Okay. So let me try to draw it properly. So case 1 will be arranging phi in the first possible way. And case 2 will be again arranging phi in the next possible way. Correct? So, how you are internally going to arrange that will be returned by your list. Okay? For example, there are two ways to arrange it. This will be case 1 and this will be case 2. So, when you are calling the function with n equal to phi, you should get the list of these two nodes. So, that is what you will get here. You will get this list. And once you get this list, you can use the values in the list to arrange that. For example, if you do right of 0, you will get the case 1. These, this node you will get. And if you do right of 1, you will get this case 2. You will get this possible arrangement. So that, that is what will be returned in this list to you. So you have to iterate through the entire list and get all the combinations because you have to return all the possible ways to arrange, right? So what we will do? We will iterate through the list. So, to get the actual node, you have to iterate through the list to get the combination. So, you can iterate through the list for each left and right. So, you will get the left arrangement and the right arrangement, right? You can create a new tree now. With 0 as the parent, left and the right with the with this given arrangement, right? So, uh, what are we doing here? We are calling this constructor function, uh, the last const uh, constructor function, this one. With 0 will be our parent, the left node will be the node specified by us and the right node will be this node. So, what we are basically doing? We are creating a new tree here. So, what will this do, right? Uh, let's let's try to take an example what happened so we wrote code to call the left and to call the right and to get the answer so what will be the, what will be the left array left is an array and right is an array uh, vector right dynamic array it contains the nodes now in our example i is equal to 1 for the left and for the right what did you call it as for the right, you call the function for phi, right? And for the left, you call the function for 1. So, what your left array will be? Your left array will be a single array containing a single value, only one single node. What will be your right array? Right array will be two values. Right array will be a list of two nodes giving you two different arrangements, right? So, right of 0 will give you one arrangement, right of 1 will give you next arrangement. Now, what you are doing? You are iterating through both 
left and right array to create all possible combinations of left and right child. So if you take the first possible combination, you will get the left child as this, right child as this. If you take the second combination, you will get the left child as this and you will get the right child as this. So you have to create a new tree with this left, with this right. So what will be a new node that you will create? Parent node and the left child will be this in the case 1. Right child will be this in the case 1, right? So this will be your case 1. Case 1, okay? Next time when you iterate through the left and right array, what will happen? You will get the case 2. And in case 2, what will happen? Case 2. This will be the left child again. And this will be the right child. So this will be your case 2. Left child will be a single node and right child will be a different arrangement. So this is what we are doing here. Similarly, you will create all the possible arrangements. Okay. Now this you can save it in answer. Let's create an answer and we can save it. This will be one valid arrangement for this given case. Okay. So let me declare answer. We will declare answer outside here vector tree node star answer and in this answer we will save this arrangement okay now what you can do is you can return this answer after this for loop ends you can return this answer okay now what is the problem with this approach Let's first run and see if it's working and it's giving us the correct answer. Then we'll try to discuss what is the problem with this approach. First, let me try to zoom this out a little bit. Just a second. It's 200%. That's why it's like this. Okay, it's accepted, right? So there's no problem with this code. Let's see the code once again. Except that if you try to submit it, you will get time limit exceeded because till now we have just done recursion, right? We have to also save the answers again and again. We don't want to process the answers. So we will just store the answers. So you can just store the answers for a given case. So let me take a map to store the answers. Let me take an ordered map. Int vector tree node star. So if we are calculating the answer for a given case, let's say for phi, we have already calculated the answer, right? So why will I calculate it again? We can just store the answer. So if dp of n not equal to dp dot n, this is a way in C++ to check if you are, if there is any entry in the map or not. So if the iterator does not go to the end, means there is some entry in the map, then you can just return already stored answer. Otherwise, you can just save it for the first time and then return it. Okay? That's it. These, this is the simple two line of code which will just memoize the solution. And now if we submit it, it should not give us time limit exceeded. Expected. So we have forgotten one more angular bracket. Um... Okay, so this should be dp.findn. So we are using the find function to find whether that entry exists or not. And when we submit and see, we can see that it is accepted. Thank you for being patient and listening.